uh, it's amazing to be here again one more year. Unfortunately, this year virtually, but at least we can stay together somehow. Please tell me where you're from. So that's time to do interactions. Please put your name. Uh, tell me where you're from. My name is Otavio Santana. I'm from Brazil. And right now I'm living in Portugal. Therefore, I become a kind of European. Today, I will cover uh, attaching cloud computing solution with Java. The whole scope of this, uh, this presentation is to talk more about, okay, we have Java and we have cloud. How can we merge these two words in just one place? Okay, my Twitter handle is Java, and I'm working right now at Platform SH. Basically, if you want to put your application smoothly in the cloud, uh, you can use us. Platform SH is a pass, therefore a platform as a service where you can put any kind of application that you wish there. So microservice, monolith, whatever you whatever. whatever. I'm Deb Hell Engineer. Uh, my Twitter handle. I'm Java Champion, executive member from JSP, Apache Committer, Eclipse Committer, Eclipse Product Leader. And also on my free time, I write books and blogs about mostly technology. Therefore, yes, I need to have a more healthy social life. So let's begin. So today, as I mentioned before, we, we we're gonna cover the both boards, right? And how can you merge in just one? Let's start first with cloud. What is cloud? <laughs> That's a hard question because if you go to several articles, you, you're gonna have a different answer to that. But let's try to keep it simple. Basically, cloud is somebody else's computer, somebody else's server. Why did I say that? Basically, is when you ask when you are a soft house or you are a soft company and you don't care about keep or maintain hardware. Therefore, you're gonna take this hardware complexity and pay to somebody else handle that to you. That's why cloud exists, to simplify any kind of service. Yes, we have different flavors of service like we have different kind of pizza servers. And when I usually talk about cloud and this kind of service, I prefer this analogy because I love pizza a lot. And right now I'm close, I'm close from Italy. So that's a nice opportunity to talk more and more often about pizza. And let's try to keep it, keep it simple. Let's try to do an analogy between pizza and cloud. Okay. The first one, is when you decide to make pizza at home, by your home. Basically, you need to prepare everything. You need to have the whole hardware. You need to have the whole know-how because, yes, if you decide to do everything at, at your home, you need to handle the complexity and the risk as well. Therefore, cheese, topping, tomato, pizza, fire, fire, oven, electric gas, and yes, finally prepare the table and the drinks. When you do need to do everything at home on the cloudish, that is traditional on-premise. Can we simplify that? Yes, we can. Let's move on to the, to the right, okay? And in the pizza language, we have stay in bag. What does that mean? It's basically when you decide to go to the grocery, buy a pizza, and then return to your home. You don't need to handle the pizza anymore. You just need to put in the microwave, and that is it. We still need to prepare the table. You need to prepare the drinks if you want to. But you decreased the number of complexity when you go to this way. You don't need to handle the infrastructure. And the cloudish that is inflexible at the service where you don't need to handle the hardware anymore. Basically, you have the hardware and you don't need to, usually you have the system operation and usually you need to put your uh, software there. Sometimes you need to install Docker, install any kind of application that your application needs. 
database, firewall, this kind of thing. We, you still have complexity, however, lower than on-premise, okay? And let's move on, let's make it even simple and simpler. Uh, right now we have pizza delivery. What does that mean? It's basically when I call or use any kind of application, Uber Eats, iFood, whatever you want to use, uh, request a pizza, a pizza. We don't need to handle the electric gas, microwave, anything. You just need to handle the dining, dining table and the drinks if you want to. If you prefer, for sure, you can eat pizza while you are watching Netflix or something like that. My whole point here is you don't need to handle the pizza anymore. Yes, and there's a platform and a service. Uh, basically, you don't need to uh, handle the complexity of installation, the complexity of security, you usually don't need to handle with firewalls. You don't need to handle about upgrades, backups. Usually the whole thing is on your platform and the service. Oh, it's supposed to be there. And the last one, in the easiest way to handle pizza and also cloud is dine out. For sure, it, we are not possible to do that right now. But you can imagine the future, or maybe in the past, like two years ago, where you can go to the restaurant. You don't need to handle anything, right? So the, you don't need to prepare the pizza, you don't need to prepare the table, you don't need to clean the dish after they, take, after they eat something. You just go to the restaurant, sit down, order something, wait, eat, Pay the bill for sure. Please do that. Try to, if you don't, try to run faster than the, the manager in the restaurant. Uh, and then you leave. Okay. The whole complexity belongs to the restaurant. And that's the whole idea of software as a service. Okay. Uh, the whole point here is everything has a trade off. Because if you decide to go to dine out, less complexity, the blue points here is basically where you don't need to handle anymore. For example, in dine out, you don't need to handle anything. It's like your Gmail, right? In pizza delivery, you have less, uh, more complexity than SaaS. And my whole point here is dine out is amazing because don't handle anything. However, you usually pay more for that. Because, because uh, when you decide to use software as a service, you're not using this just the hardware. You are using the uh, the knowledge to make everything you've done. You have to, you need to handle the software as well. And that's the whole trade-off about cloud. You need to choose, okay, if you want to go do everything at home, probably it's going to be cheaper or somehow. However, you need to handle with more risk. You need to have the knowledge to handle that. You need to think about security. You need to think about where to keep the hardware. And if you go to SaaS, probably is is a little bit hard to, harder to tune in or do any kind of uh fancy configuration size usually you need to use what they offer and period okay that's the whole trade-off that i'd like to show less complexity means risk less risk and more abstraction and probably gonna pay more for that okay okay finally you discussed about cloud what does that mean? Finally, uh, I, yes, there's a huge discussion about our, around buzzwords because in the past we had cloud, cloud friendly, cloud ready, and right now we have cloud native. And there's a huge discussion where 
my friend Karine and I did a discussion in Joker conference that was like one month ago where we explained about the history about cloud. Right now, I will just focus on cloud native. Uh, cloud native is a new term. And if you go to several articles, you, you're going to have a different approach, different buzzword, different, different technology. Please, let me show to you these different kind of topics, okay? The first one is Cloud Native from Pivotal. Cloud Native is an approach to building and running application that exploits the advantage of the cloud computing model. The next one is a book, uh, Attaching Cloud Native Application. Cloud Native is a different way of thinking and reason about software systems. It's embodied the following concept, and it talks more about infrastructure. Is where you don't need to handle the whole complexity of operation. You need to embrace the idea of use infrastructure as a code, uh, GitOps uh, integration, and so on. The whole point of this book, the, defini the definition of cloud nature from this book is Okay, you finally embrace it globally. You can scale easily thanks to automation on the operation side. Let's move on. From InfoWord, Cloud Native in, is more about how the applications are created and deployed. When you go deeper and deeper on the cloud. Okay, that's that is cloud native from InfoWord perspective. Let's move on to the next one. This is a book, Cloud Native Development Partners in Best Practice. And from from the author, uh, Cloud Native is more about tools, deploy, update, replace, and scale. It's more about operation than software development. And it has fun because to this book here, Cloud Native is more about methodology. When you finally insert cloud in your whole methodology. Uh, if you think about the whole history of the software development, in the past we had waterfall where you need to handle the, everything in your home. That's include the deploy. Probably that's why we take at least one year to deploy. You have a deploy window that is forbidden to use Friday because deploy on Friday is forbidden. It's terrible, it's not a good idea. Right now we are living in the agile methodology where you can do more often deploy. Instead of just once in a year, you can do more like twice, three times in the week much, much more faster. And the next gener generation is cloud native transformation. So it engloves architecture perspective, operation perspective, methodology perspective, management perspective, and yes, operation perspective. So cloud native from this book embrace everything around the soft development, okay? Finally, we have the Cloud Native from Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Cloud Native Computing Foundation is an organization. It has several huge companies behind, uh, and they are working to keep and maintain uh, several amazing products. I can tell you Kubernetes, I guess, belongs to Cloud Native Computing Foundation. I'm not sure about Docker. Uh, today, Cloud Native is more about a soup of buzzwords where they said some samples like containers, service mesh, microservice, multiple infrastructure, and declarative APIs to this kind of approach. However, when I usually say this approach, my question is how about Monolith? It's not possible to use Cloud Native with Monolith? I don't think so, right? Because microservice is not a silver bullet. Therefore, you can use different kind of approach. Uh, that's why I usually don't recommend this 
this this approach from cloud native computing foundation however they are relevant and i guess it's important to say their opinion about the cloud native approach okay i went through several articles blogs books and usually that's a common answer about what does mean cloud native and usually in general you're gonna see something about okay if you create application that that is native in the cloud that is based on the container congratulations you finally have a cloud native application my whole point to you is it's uncertain what does cloud native mean to us to the whole uh IT community. Uh, as I, I you saw, I went to several articles, several books, and several companies as well. And each one has your own opinion about that because it is a green area and everybody is working right now on this. I created my own definition uh, about cloud native that I'm using right now. However, I'm still reading about it. I'm still working on cloud native, and probably it's gonna change next year. I'm not sure. Probably yes. And to me, right now at this moment in December 2020, cloud nat native to me is a set of good practice to optimize your application, an application through the cloud, through three points. Actually, the most important point. Actually, the most important. Use infrastructure as a code to optimize everything. You're gonna put this script of deploy on the Git and so on. Okay, that's my definition about cloud native. However, as I mentioned before, there is a amount of cloud native. My recommendation to you is go in these wide world, read articles to take your own opinion about that. Containers and Java. I usually I like to, to say that because uh, there's a huge relationship between container and Java. First, uh, Java is package on running time. Oh, sorry. Container is a single unit of your application. Therefore, it's a package on running time. And Java was born with the approach of, okay, I... I will create application that's gonna run anywhere. That's why you have water right on running time anywhere. Okay, okay, let's go to the next step, and that is bad best practice. However, if you have no idea, if you're not sure the, about the cloud native approach, what does cloud native mean? How can I be sure about the best practice inside cloud native? Indeed, we don't have. We're gonna use the old and gold practice. The first one, for sure, is the 12 factor application. Yes, uh, the 12 factor application was born first, first than cloud native approach. It's based on the machine Fowler book that is partner of enterprise application architecture. The whole point here is to explain to you the 12 factor application, the 12 commandment where you can have a good and a safe and a health application to avoid any kind of nightmare in the future. For example, I'm gonna I usually explain to you using the, the first three. So code base. Please don't use code base uh, as don't put your code base in the zip code and then send by mail. Please use any kind of source repository management, such as Git, Mercurial, maybe SVN. Right now, the most popular one for sure is Git, perhaps because the GitHub. Dependence, please put your dependence outside your code repository. Uh, you have several managed build applications. In the Java world right now, we have Maven, Gradle, and so on. If you are uh, PHP, we, you probably have uh, 
against Composer. If you are Python, you have Pipe, JavaScript, NPM, and so on. The whole point is don't put dependence inside your code base. Configuration. Please don't put uh, credentials such as user and source and password inside your code. You have one good and easy way to do to make that possible, thanks to configuration. If you think about uh, Eclipse Micro Profile, uh, you have one specification that is Eclipse Micro Profile configuration, where you can override the whole configuration. My whole point here is you as a developer don't need to even know about the user and the password of production. Okay, again, you as a developer don't need even to know about the credential on production of your database or any kind of critical information. And yeah, we have more practice, practice here. I, want, I don't want to go deep on that because that's not the, the topic today. But my whole point here is you can take advantage of the good practice. Okay. And let's move on. Right now, I have four amazing books. Um, the three one is recommended if you are a developer in general. And if you are a Java developer, you need to take the three and then the effective Java. The first one is Clean Code. This has become popular because it tells you how to write a readable code. And then Clean Architecture, where we explain and uh, we know. Robert Martin explains about one good way to you split your application and infrastructure and what matters to you. When he said about what matter, you think about your business perspective. Okay, DDD is domain driven design where you need to put your code closer and closer as possible to your um, business. For example, if you if you have e-commerce, please, you're probably gonna need to use um, car, order, NT, uh, user NT, and so on. The effective Java right now it's a third edition where you can go deep on the Java good practice, such as collection, how to use Lambda, Magnet Factor, when and how. A new singleton and so on. Okay. Um, there's a huge discussion about microservice. Is microservice a silver bullet? bullet? And to be honest, I don't think so. Right now we have a couple of solution, but there's there's not a silver bullet solution to us in IT area, at least right now. Okay. Uh, my whole point here is uh, we we have several books. For example, Sun Newman, he had uh, he has two books about microservice. One migrating, you one about introduction to microservice, and in both both books he has an intro when he explained when you should not use microservice. Okay. And also, I have this book here from a friend of mine, Ed Soyanaga, who explained the immigration Microsoft database. And he has a cool approach. And uh, he said, okay, just because Netflix and Amazon, you use microservice, that does not mean that you need to use Microsoft as well, because you probably you are not Netflix and Amazon. And um, there is an amazing tweet from Edson Morais, also a friend of mine. He said that based on Cobb's law, microservice is about scalabil scalability of people, not about application itself. My whole point here is monolith is tier one. There's nothing wrong if you decide to use monolith in any kind of application. Okay, okay. I explained to you cloud, cloud native, and let's go to the Java cloud native. What's going on? Let's try to merge these two words, Java and cloud native. First, what's going on to make Java even close to the cloud native perspective? 
The first one is mandatory to 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 uh, to say for sure is the JVM, because right now we have several optimization on the garbage collector. We have an incredible improvement on containers, and to make better and better integration. And yes, finally we have six month release uh, each six month, therefore twice a year. What does that mean? Instead of you, you wait like three years to get a version of Java. Right now, you have the option to take one Java version every six months. Oh, Tab, that's too fast to me. Don't worry. Uh, Java, the OpenJDK works with LTS, long-term support. If you are an Ubuntu user, you probably know about it. But if you're not, don't worry. I'm going to explain to you br briefly. Uh, LTS, long term support, is a version that you can have support to at least two or three years. The, the last LTS was Java 11, before that was Java 8. If you want, you can keep with Java 11 until the next LTS version, probably Java 17. And then you can keep with Java 17 until you more three years to the next LTS version. Okay, so go LTS to LTS. On the specification world, we have Jakarta E. Jakarta E, if you can think about the history of Java E, is the generation number four. The first Java E generation was when they decided to put everything inside the JVM. That's why we had Cobar, we had XML processor, we have web service API inside the JVM. That you can say the, the generation number one, the first generation. The second generation was when the Sun decided to put this kind of uh, uh, environment outside the JVM. That time was born Tomcat, any kind of servers. That is the second generation. The third generation was when Sun was acquired, acquired by Oracle. The time was the Java EE6, where we had CDI. And the last generation was when Oracle gift the whole code to Eclipse Foundation, okay? And it, it get, we got a new name, right now it's Jakarta E instead of Java E. It's under the Eclipse Foundation umbrella. The whole point is to make a giant methodology, therefore, instead of wait like two years, three years to one single version, we're gonna have a version every year, okay? And the whole scope right now is to deliver our Jakarta E application to make easy to you as Java developer delivery cloud native application. Um, beside the Jakarta E, we have Eclipse and MicroProfile that's a small piece of Jakarta E. Say briefly, is much more than that. But uh, just to sum summarize, we have Jakarta E. We take a small piece of Jakarta E where we had CDI, JAX-RS, and JSON bind. And based on these three APIs, we create several frameworks and API to work with microservice. Microprofile is under the Eclipse Foundation umbrella as well. It has some idea of a Java methodology. So every quarter, usually it has a new version of Eclipse and Microprofile. Yes, it is faster than Jakarta E. Okay. Yeah, that's amazing. I need to update this slide. Uh, but right now, Clips Foundation is offering Jakarta E 9 instead of 8. Uh, and MicroProfile is coming up to Java version number 4. And we have a couple of API to make the Java developer life even easier. So open tracing, open API, REST client configuration, full tolerance, metrics, JWT propagation, health, CDI, and so on. So 
as I mentioned to you before, uh, the first line here with CDI, JSONP, JAX, RS, JSON binding belongs to Jakarta E, okay? A small piece with more APIs focus on microservice. And yes, both platforms are working and they are growing up. So we have re released uh, Jakarta E9. There is a huge amount of work inside the Jakarta E10. Okay, let's go to the damn time. Let me check how long time do I have. Okay, I have 30 minutes. As I mentioned to you before, okay, let's close here. Uh, Cloud Native Foundation provides to us a huge amount of solutions. So you can take a look here. That's a Mongoose, right? So right now it has 1,550 1, cards with a couple of solutions. So we have database, stream message, application definite, image build, uh, CI, CD. My whole point here that, that I usually want to show is uh, Cloud Native is much more than Kubernetes, okay? We have container runtimes. And as I can show to you right now, containers are much more than uh, Docker. Okay. Uh, that's my whole point to you. And as I mentioned to you before, uh, cloud native uh, cloud has different kind of flavors and or types where you use a service a definition. As you can see, you have tools to make you to handle everything by your home on the premise. We have Kubernetes if, because if you want to run it on infrastructure as a service, that's up to you. You have PaaS, a platform as a service, that we have a couple of solutions. And I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, we have Kubernetes set fire service providers as well. Uh, service mesh and much more. And yes, we have platform as a service. That's include the company that I'm working right now. That's a platform.sh, platform sh, where you can take a look here. That's their website. And we have a couple of solutions. Don't worry, that's share link to you if you want to go know to know more. The whole idea of the platform sh is to decrease to you the complexity. So let's take a look here to any kind of GitHub product. So you can go to the GitHub. GitHub, uh, okay. Um, one second, let's take the link here. GitHub platform sample. Platform template. If you want to run, for example, Quarkus, you can run with a single click button. For example, here is my um, GitHub project, right? That's my .xml. As you can see, I don't need to put any kind of new dependence to avoid the vendor locking. It's basically Quarkus dependence. As you can see, Quarkus, rest easy. Quarkus with the unit five, rest assured. Quarks Maven plugin and so on. And basically what you're gonna do is deploy my application with a single click button. Hello, Java to days. And yes, if you want to, you can choose the region that you want to use to select. In this case here, I'm gonna use United States. But if you want, you can use Europe, you can use uh, a huge number of options. So basically, I click on deploy my application and it will build my application based on that GitHub repository. Why? Basically, Platform SH is a uh, cloud native solution where you can put everything just one place using the infrastructure as a code approach, okay? 
While it's building, let me show to you one more way to build your application. For example, if you want to, you can go here to platform message and create your first product based uh, on the template. So you have two days in spring. Just show to you that's possible. United States. This time here, I'm gonna use application front template. You can use the language if you want. So .NET, Elasticsearch, Go, Java, Node.js, PHP, Python, Ruby, and so on. Let me use uh, Java because I'm a Java developer. And I'm gonna choose for sure because the name is Spring. So how we create a product uh, that is Spring with Spring MVC, MVC and Spring MongoDB. Okay, let's wait to build. It's built, it. and as you can see, it's based on a Git. I push from the master. It's building my application, and as you can see, I have two containers. One to define the halt, and another one to define my application itself. I have my URL to access. I have my Git repository if I want to. But if you want, you can use just a Git. You have integration with GitHub, Git, Bitlock, Bucket, and so on. And yes, you have the access by XSH. You need to configure to have access as well, but that's not, there's nothing different than usual, right? So security matters. As you can see here, it's, it's right now it has three containers. One to define the host, another one to define my application, and the last one is my database itself. Okay, let's wait the, the build. Mm, why does that happen? Let's show it to you. Why I usually talk about platform SH when you talk about cloud native? Because uh, the whole point of platform SH is to decrease the number of risk in your application. Because, okay, yes, you have the option to do everything by your home, but you need to handle the whole complexity. Complexity is cost and sometimes it's risk. Because when something goes wrong, you, you usually don't have anybody to help on that. Okay? You need to think about that when you need to choose between the service. And a huge challenge today is because cloud is so complex. Uh, you probably saw several presentations around Kubernetes, Docker, those are amazing, but how about database? Do we need do we still need to handle with database, right? Is the is container a good way to handle with database? If so, how to to handle with backups? I mean there is a huge complexity that usually nobody tells you when you go through the cloud. Okay. And the whole point of platform message is to decrease this kind of complexity in a cloud perspective. And it's basically a polyglot multi-cloud pass platform as a service with CI CD. And you have support to any kind of architecture decision. So if you want to run monolith, microservice, stateful, stateless application, go for it. We have support. We have support to several languages, Python, PHP, JavaScript, and so on. As I mentioned before, it, it works with infrastructure as a code. Okay, you want to use MySQL, OpenStreet, MongoDB, whatever you want, don't worry. You're just going to put that on the file, a service file that I'm going to show to you soon. And that is it. You don't need to handle anything else. You don't need to handle with backups. You don't need to handle with how to upgrade my service to anything else. The whole, complex, the whole complexity belongs to the cloud providers. Uh, on this case, platform as a service provider, platform as age, okay? As I mentioned to you before, basically you need to, have, to handle three files to build your application and platform as age. The first one is my application file, where we, we have a couple of configuration in just one file, as you can see here. I need to set my name, my type, 
in this case, my language in the version, my disk space, how to build my application. As you can see here, I'm using Maven Clean Package. The relationship because security matters to us. The whole point here is, is make sure that my application has granted access to a database. In this case, a Postgres. And the last one is my command to run my container. In this case, is Java slash jar, any kind of Java configuration, my credential to override my, my user, my database, my password, this kind of thing. If you remember, right, uh, as I mentioned before, the trial fact application, the configuration is something important because on the real world, you as a developer don't need to know about user and password. Service. Um, the whole idea here is to, okay, you define the name, you define the type, the version, and the disk space. Oh, Tavon, right now I want you to do the upgrade. Don't worry. You change the version, push your code, and that is it. It's going to do an upgrade to you automatically. If you want to, you can have you can you, you have the option to create a branch, push that branch, activate this branch to test your environment. And if we, everything is okay, you can merge this branch. My whole point here is, if you have you, if you want to have like three environments, a production, a staging, and development, that is that is it. You have one branch to each environment. If you want to, each developer has your environment, that is it as well. Just make sure that each developer has your home branch, and that is it. It decreases the whole complexity, okay? Uh, again, application to define the configuration of the, my application, the service, the, the service that my application needs, such as database, cache, queue and so on. And the root is the last one where you define the root where your application is gonna be public. As you can see here, I use my default URL to deploy my application through HTTP. And, and that is it. The whole point is, Platform Stage is gonna handle everything and then you can rest. Uh, here is just the over overview, the web console, the integration with API, you have CI, if you want to have source operation. We also provide app runtimes uh, with a couple of language, PHP, Java, Node, JS, Go, Python, Ruby, C Sharp, and so on. We provide several services, such as MySQL, uh, PostgreSQL, uh, Kafka, Redis, Solar, Atomic, uh, Elastic, MongoDB, Main Cache, and so on. Okay, and um, we orchestrate the service to you. We have the continuous deployment. Therefore, if you push the master, push to the main branch, it's gonna build the application to you. And as a pass, we have support to several infrastructure that code as a service where. We have support to Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Orange, and so on. That's the whole idea of the platform message. That is GitOps, basically everything that your application needs, the configuration that your application needs goes through Git, and you have the integration with GitHub, BitLocket, and so on. And right now, platform message. I uh, have over 1,000 clients, and the most famous are The Economist, British Coulson, Unity, and so on. And yes, we have support to several Java frameworks, so Helidon, Micronaut, Quarkus, Microprofile, Turntail, Spring, Maven, Payada, Tomcat, Wildfly, Cradle, Maven, and so on. And if you want to know more, if you want, want to get the links, the reference, here you go, that's your time. So. Uh, you have the QR code here. Please take your phone, take a picture uh, where you, you go to a link where you have a couple of reference about this presentation, this sample code, and also 
how to you build application easily in the cloud. Okay. If there's any question, please let me know. Okay. Uh, my application finally is built. Let me check here. Finally, I have my user. Let you hear Java today's Java at gmail.com. Let's add the second one. Otavio, Otavio at gmail.com. Finally, I have two. If I want to, I can play with backups. And that is it. Ah, yeah. I need one from. Okay, right now it's building my backup. As you can see, I have the option to see the logs. Ah, I forget to say that to you. Let's go to overview here. I have my build. Let me show it to you. Basically, it's it's a Maven project, right? Therefore, I uh, I will download the whole internet <laughs> because it's Maven. Uh, okay, let's check the question. Really interesting lecture. Thank you. That's my pleasure, Flamin. Atla can platform SH be integrated with Microsoft Azure? Yes. Uh, you have the option to integrate with platform with Microsoft Azure. Uh, if you have any kind of application in Microsoft Azure, you can run with Platform SH if you want to. That is no a big deal with that. Uh, okay, this one here is the the Quarkus, right? Where we build a deploy based on the GitHub. Uh, this one here is my backup. I did my backup and then I can delete my whole information. Okay, right now I don't have nothing in my sleeve. And let's do the restore. Let's restore the application. Just to show to you because usually nobody tells you about backup. And yes, backup still matters. Uh, the cloud native perspective and yeah, do you using database on the cloud native. But my whole point here is you have the option to decrease the complexity with platform message. Basically it's gonna close the connection for a while. We we're gonna have you're gonna have the option to do a backup where we don't stop the service. But right now we are looking for consistency. Therefore we request you close your application, do the backup and then start up your application. But soon Probably next week, you have the option to, uh, if you don't want to stop your application, you have the option to unsafe backup if you want to. Okay, it's it's loading the backup and soon uh, you have the option. But my whole point to you here, just say that's a huge word around uh, cloud native. Please let me know if you have any questions. So let me share to you the landscape cloud native link. Atiwa Hairula has a question whether Platform SH can be integrated with Microsoft Azure. Yes, you have the option. You can run your home application if you want with Azure. Okay. As I showed you in this slide here. So right now, Platform SH is a platform as a service, right? So it needs uh, infrastructure to handle that. And right now we have support to Amazon, Google. Oh, come on. Amazon. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Amazon, Google, and Microsoft Azure in, in Orange. But if you want to, there's no big rush if you want to use Oracle Cloud with Platform SH. Um, uh, or if you have any kind of application in uh, Microsoft Azure and you, you want to have another one in Platform SH where you can integrate this, that is no big deal because you can do this kind of security to organize your application. Uh, but yes, you can run your home application 
at Microsoft Azure at Platform SH. Okay, let's check if the backup is over. Okay, the backup is over. Let's check here. Let's refresh. Oops, something goes wrong. Let's check what's going on here. It is starting, hopefully. Okay, it's starting. Basically, as I mentioned to you before, uh, it's gonna, it will stop my application, do the backup, and then start my application again. The restore is basically something. You have you have the option to do that if doubt, stop your application. In Platform Message, we call that of unsafe backup restore. That's on you. And if you want to, you have the option as well to uh, to upgrade the, the database if you want to. Uh, as I mentioned, you show the backup. And that is it. So if, it, if there is no question, thank you. We also have the Deploy Friday on YouTube. Follow us and we have Twitter handle that is Platform Message uh, on Twitter. And thank you. Hopefully you enjoyed this presentation and see you, you, you soon. If you don't, I wish you a happy new year and stay safe, stay at home. Thank you, Tavio, for your great presentation.